Now let's talk about mixtures of gases. And when gases are mixed together, their molecules behave independently of each other, even when they're mixed. Uh, and we'll talk about what that means. First off, all gases in the mixture have the same volume. All gases completely fill the container. That means that the volume of the container is the volume of the gas. So uh, volume of container is the volume of the gas. And that's just going to equal V and PV equals NRT. So volumes are all the same. All gases in the mixture are at the same temperature. Um, so T will be the temp temperature of all gases. Um, and therefore, in certain applications, a mixture or the mixture can be thought of as one gas, and we can use the ideal gas law. for the mixture. PV equals NRT, and we don't make any differentiation between the fact that it is a mixture. And uh, remember, our picture of a gas is uh, that there's lots of space and in fact, there's approximately 10 diameters. And what we'd like to add to that picture right now is that if you have a mixture, then you might have, uh, let's say, in air or dry air, which has had the H2O, the water vapor, H2O gas removed. Uh, if we have a nitrogen, and a nitrogen is gonna be N2, and if we have an oxygen, and I'm gonna shade these in. And we have an argon, and we have a carbon dioxide, and this is gonna be, uh, let's see. They can all be zipping around and even bouncing off the walls, which I know, <laughs> figuratively at least, during this COVID-19 pandemic, I am anyway, uh, bouncing off the walls. So even though this is a, uh, air is a mixture of gases, we could calculate all of those together as the moles of gas in the ideal gas law. And I'll point out that each of these has a different volume, but ideal gases assume that each gas particle has no volume, so they're all the same, treated all the same anyway and that even though these are different gas molecules with different intermolecular forces, ideal gases have zero intermolecular forces, so again, they're all treated as the same, um, and yet they all have collisions with the walls, and they all create pressure with the walls, okay? All right, so now let's talk more about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. For Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, let me state it. The total pressure, and total pressure is oftentimes P total, is going to be equal to the partial pressure of all of the gases. And the pressure of a single gas in a mixture of gases is called its partial pressure. The sum of the partial pressures of all gases in the mixture equals the total pressure. So let's do this for dry air from the previous page. Dry air was made up of four gases, and each of those gases has a pressure, which is called a partial pressure. So the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of argon plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide equals the total pressure for the mixture. And if we come back to that picture for a second, 
So all of these particles are going to be colliding with the walls of the container. And according to how many moles there are, Let me try that again. If the volume of the container is the same for all these gases and the temperature is the same for all of these gases, then depending upon how many moles of each individual gas there are, and there will be a certain number of collisions that creates a certain pressure with the walls of the container. So volume and temperature are the same for all of these. Different number of moles creates different amounts of pressure. And it doesn't matter which gas, if you have one mole of nitrogen, it can, uh, will make a certain pressure. One mole of oxygen will make it the same amount of pressure because the gases uh, uh, act the same. They are ideal, they have nothing specific about them. Okay. All right, let me see where we are then. Um, yes. So each gas, its moles creates its own pressure. Um, the partial pressures of any one gas, uh, the partial pressure of any one gas is equal to its mole fraction times the total pressure. So if we were to do for nitrogen, the partial pressure of nitrogen is equal to the uh, mole fraction of nitrogen times the total pressure, where uh, this is the mole fraction of nitrogen, and it is equal to the moles of nitrogen divided by the total moles. Um, and so this just says that whatever fraction of the total moles there are, that's the portion or the fraction of the total pressure that is attributed to nitrogen. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this says, this is a typical example for Dalton's law of partial pressures. Determine the mass of argon in a mixture of helium, neon, and argon with the following pressures. Uh, we know the total pressure, PT, and it looks like uh, they use capital T, uh, or I use capital T, I'll also use lowercase t, um, is 662 millimeters of mercury. That's going to be equal to the partial pressure of all three of the gases added up. And these problems uh, oftentimes are pretty plug and chug, meaning if you know the right equation to write, that uh, you can uh, fill it, write that down, and then go ahead and fill in, let's see. Uh, there is Dalton's law of partial pressures. There is the ideal gas law. And we have a bunch of other equations coming up. So these are on your conversion and equation sheets. No reason to memorize them. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we know that the partial pressure of neon is 112 millimeters of mercury. We know that the partial pressure of helium is 341. We don't know the partial pressure of argon, but we can solve for it. It's going to be 662 minus the partial pressures of our other gases. Two oh nine millimeters of mercury. And uh, we will convert that into atmospheres because we're going to be using the ideal gas law to get our moles and then our grams. There are 760 millimeters of mercury. per one atmosphere. Zero point two seven five atmospheres.
and uh, I'm going to be writing an ideal gas law for argon, partial pressure of argon times volume equals moles of argon times RT. Like I said, I like to plug all my numbers in. I've got my 0 0.275 atmospheres. I've got my volume of one liter. I don't know my moles. I have my temperature and I have my R. Let me write my R first, 0 0.08206. Now, uh, again, these are your notes, uh, and I'm creating them to be full notes. Uh, but even when I solve problems, I include all of my units because that way I think about every time I write this ideal gas constant, I think of whether all of my other units will cancel out. Let's see, and we have given, given Kelvin, like so. So yes, my Kelvin cancels, my moles don't cancel, atmospheres and liters do. So my answer is gonna be in moles. I know that when I divide through on the other side by this number, it will kick the moles up to the top. Uh, I love thinking about units, I love units. Um, in fact, uh, I once made a shirt that said, I heart units. Um, I have to wear it, I have to find it. Now, uh, rearranging and solving, and I will leave that to you. Well, I'll do it actually. 0.275 times one divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. Oh, can't even see that. And then 0 0.0112 moles of argon. Then we check in with our problem statement. It says, uh, we're not looking for moles, we're looking for mass. Now we need my periodic table, which I always keep somewhere around here. For argon, 39.95 grams per mole. One mole. Thirty nine point nine five grams. Again, I always go back to the numbers that I've written here. Point zero one one two times thirty nine point nine five. Zero point four four seven. grams of argon. And that is our complete problem worked. Uh, and we started with the uh, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, and we ended with the Ideal Gas Law. This is going to be a companion problem. This one is uh, going to actually ask for the mole fractions and partial pressures, so we'll work this one. In a 12.5 liter tank, that's my volume, with 24.2 grams of helium and 4.32 grams of oxygen at 298 Kelvin. So you'll notice you have your temperature and you have your volume, and uh, that is enough. And we have grams, so we can get moles. All right, so let's see. I have grams, so I'm going to get moles first. And uh, 4.003 grams of helium for one mole. Six point oh five four point three two grams oxygen and 32.00 grams per mole. Zero point one three five moles of oxygen. All right, so I got my moles. Let's see, mole fractions. Mole fractions, I know they're new 
but let's go ahead and do them first. Mole fraction of helium is going to be moles of helium divided by total moles. I have 6.05 plus 0.135. Six point one nine to three fig, sig figs. My mole fraction of helium is going to be almost as large as it can get. Six point oh five divided by six point one nine. Zero point nine seven seven. And as far as mole fraction of oxygen, you can plug this in. Or you could realize that with only two gases, the two fractions have to add up to one. So 0.135 divided by 6.19, 0 0.02, one eight. Uh, zero point zero two two to three decimal to well uh, now mole fractions because they have moles over moles have no units. They are fractions after all. Now let's see. Two. We've got our mole fractions. Now we need partial pressures. Um what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the moles in the ideal gas law for helium. Specifically for helium and then specifically for oxygen. That will give me my partial pressures for each of these. Plugging everything in. I'm looking for partial pressure. So then let's do it slightly differently. Let's this time solve. Plugging in, I know my moles of helium. I know my ideal gas constant. I know my temperature. And I know my volume. Moles, liters, Kelvin, left with atmospheres. 6.05 times 0 0.08206 times 298 divided by 12.5, 11.8 atmospheres. And I can do something very similar for my oxygen. Everything stays the same except for uh, 0 0.135 times 0 0.08206 times 298 divided by 12.5. 0 0.264 atmospheres. There, my partial pressures are done as well for helium and oxygen. The next page is also a companion problem. Look for the answers on the in, within the learning management system.